Welcome everyone to another episode of Traders Talk Podcast. Today is an extremely special episode of Traders Talk Podcast, man. I got Chris with me. Uh, he goes by the Instagram name of FX Da Vinci. And Chris is actually one of, uh, this is the first time I'm doing a podcast with one of my own students. So uh, Chris is part of the Trading LP community. Um, we'll talk about when he joined, but he's one of my students. He's one of my best students. Um, he's been getting a bunch of payouts. He's been smashing my Forex funds to death. So we want to talk to Chris today about, you know, what life was like for him before he started trading, how we learned, how the mentorship went for him. And, um, you know, we're going to ask him a bunch of questions to see, see, like, you know, what got him to the profitability stage and how he's still able to sustain himself right now. Because I think, Chris, you're on your, what, fifth or sixth payout at this point? As of right now, it's my sixth payout. Amazing, man. That's amazing. So how long have you been trading for? So um, just to generalize it, actually, I first uh, Forex specifically, I got into trading it in the beginning of December of last year. So about nine months now. Um, Damn. Trading in general, okay. like uh, investing in trading was way back in 2019. Right. Uh, so, okay. uh, you know, stocks and options. Was that stock? Like, were you still studying like market structure and things like that? No, that's stock? Funny, funny thing is not at all. Like as far as market structure, I was mainly into like news. Like, let's say I would put money into Tesla and stuff like that. I would always research new things that's going on with the company, you know, Elon Musk and things like that. Um, right, but right, right. I got into options, uh, shout out to my homie Marvin. He's the one, um, a good friend of mine uh, since childhood. Uh, I seen him post profits from, you know, options trading. And so that's when I got okay. into trading for profits kind of thing. And then, uh, you know, I joined this community and things like that. Um, I didn't know right. anything about market structure. So for me, obviously, when I saw his profits, when he would show me, you know, all I, would, all, all I thought about was, you know, how much money I could make, right? Um, right. So that lasted from, you know, near the end of 2019 all the way to 2021. I was nowhere near break even. <laughs> That's for okay. sure. So, you know, as far as uh, me jumping into Forex, like, uh, I feel like my advantage, so to speak, was that, you know, I knew, you knew how lost yeah. it felt like, like, you know what I mean? I'd but really, you've only been in Forex for nine months? Yes. Damn, dude. Okay, because I like I made the switch from crypto. I know some people that made uh, you know switches from stocks and things, but like you've covered a lot of ground real quickly. Uh, how when did you join my community? When did you join the trading LP thing? Um, I think it was on February. That was when you know I finished okay, you know baby, baby pips and stuff like that. Um, wow. I, saw your, I saw your interview with FTMO. That's when I first discovered FTMO, and I was like, "Oh man, hey, this dude! Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's kind of in. He was kind of in my setting where he's, you know, working. He was working that nine to five kind of thing, yeah, yeah. you know, for a while, corporation kind of thing, which is what I'm still doing today. But you know, and you know, I saw what was possible, which what you have, you know, shown with your profits and consistency. Uh, so right away, man, I, just, I have to watch all your videos before I got your course <laughs> but uh that, that was when your youtube kind of first started so it was really quick um yeah, yeah. but yeah man uh, you made you know learning the basics of the supply and demand strategy which i use today you know very easy to learn i gained a lot of good psychology foundation risk management foundation especially thank you thank you bro yeah we'll, we'll, we'll definitely touch on that so i guess uh, you know usually i ask the question you know what your what your learning curve was like so you already knew stuff from options and stocks but it looks like you Looks like you're a pretty quick learner. I'm going to be very honest with you because usually people can't just come into Forex and, you know, smash it out that fast. Looks like you're a pretty quick learner, but I guess uh, this was the only course that you've ever like bought. And I guess this just kind of worked for you. So this was the first uh, Forex course for sure Forex that, I, course. that I purchased. Um, I did purchase uh, another course from from James JFX. If you if you know of him, uh, he is another okay. supply and demand trader. Um, so right. Uh, also Doyle, shout out Doyle and Jay. Yes. Um, but yeah, those were the only you three courses. similar as me. Yeah. Yes. So the, those similar. are the three courses that, you know, I still stick to this day. I always refer back to. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the one that definitely got me started was your course, especially, you know, um, when you when you were uh, talking about, um, you know, risk management, you know, how greed kind of took over some of your profits at one point. You know, I kind of really related to that because that happened to me, especially, you know. When I first got my yeah. funded account back in March, you know, I was in a uh, 6% profit, you know, on a, on a 200K and I was a lot of money. 
<laughs> you gotta take it. You got that's what I that's what I was telling you know Jay, who's another member of our community. I'm gonna be doing a podcast with him. You know, it's his first time uh, funded, and I was like, yo, listen, lock that five six percent in because you wanna what you wanna do is in your first funded account, you need to get your investment back. So you paid five hundred dollars for the challenge. You're up two three percent. Take get that five hundred dollars back. Put it in your pocket. Put that extra money in your pocket, and then now you're trading risk free, right? So. A lot, a lot of people make this mistake. They'll go to 6%, 7%. And I realized this over time because I've been trading funded accounts for like over a year and a half. And believe me, man, I've taken accounts. Uh, I've taken $100,000 I've taken $100, account to uh, 37%, $37,000, all the way back to 9000 Felt absolutely horrible. I've taken it to 21000 back down to 6000 I've taken them up to fifteen, back to zero. So I've been through this thing many times, and greed is a you know I don't want to use the word, but greed is, is, is greed can mess you up pretty badly. So Killer, like one of the thing, one of the rules that I, I I sometimes teach and I stick to is six to eight percent per month. Close the account, have another funded account to work off of. Have, rotate them is usually the best way to go about it. So that's crazy. Like you started the course in February, and you really started trading forex nine months ago. But you got funded in March, which was not too like you got funded right away. So, like, damn, that means it, it really it really clicked for you. So, but so right now you're working still full time, just like you were before. Yes, exactly. So um, right now, you know, I've I've always been uh, you know in the in the nine to five scene for a while uh, since I was right. in high school actually. Uh, first job, I was holding signs. You know what I mean? Like I yes. I always knew um, the value of you know. Um, making money for yourself, you know, being able to share sure. like that. So um, definitely since then, I have not stopped working since. And, you know, for me right now, I feel like exactly what we were talking about earlier. It's like, you know, having this nine to five to fund, you know, my living, my, 100%. Uh, my trading, you know, venture that I'm into. 100%. And yeah. Investments overall. So it, you know, it makes me more comfortable when I'm in the charts you know, if I were to take a loss, it wouldn't affect me as much as if it wouldn't affect you, that, right? Yeah, like so. Then, so yeah, uh, you know, we had somebody, some somebody had talked to me about this where they they quit their job and they're like, you know what, I'm gonna just trade full time and I'm gonna make it happen. I was like, I don't think that's a good idea, dude. Like, you you can't just quit your job to trade full time and hope that it works out. You need to work full time, make trading work. Once trading is paying you more than your actual job by like at least five times. Then you quit your job, right? So same thing with me. Like I, I was profitable uh, January 2021, but I continued to work all of the way up to, up to August. So I built up a buffer. I made sure I had like six months of living expenses. Um, even then, man, the day I quit my job, I was like having a panic attack because I didn't know what was gonna happen. Like I don't know if I don't know if this thing was really. But it's been the greatest year of my life, man. I can't, I can't, I can't, um, I can't say anything about that. So I'll I'll, I'm, I'm. I'm <laughs> Like you know, we we we've been killing. We kill it in Discord. Like sometimes when 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 we go crazy, like me, you, some of the other students, Jay. Um, so you know, Discord gets popping every now and then. We 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 just smash right. it, bro. The community's been doing a great a great job. Like, uh, so with your work, when do you find the time to trade? Are you trading before work, after work, during work? So man, people think I'm crazy. Like whenever I tell them, like, um, so right now I'm renting with my brother, me, and my brother. So uh, there was a point in time where he didn't he had no idea what i was doing like he would wake up in the middle of the night like 2 a.m like and he hears what are you doing I play a lot of lo-fi music when i'm trading yeah he's yeah, like this yeah, yeah. still awake like what the hell <laughs> but you know uh to a certain yeah. point he's like hey what you doing up late bro like and then you know yeah. i wake i'm literally awake from you know in my time in california uh 12 a.m uh to 2 30 to 3 a.m and i wake up again at 5 45 5 30 a.m and i'm up till 7 30 a.m and then I take another quick power nap until I'm off to work, man. Uh, so, you know, are you working from home or you actually go to work? I get home from work and then, you know, so, so you, you three actually days go out to of work. the week, I actually okay. work. I actually go, okay. yes. Okay. For two days. Damn, out. that's a crazy routine. So you're up between 1230 a.m. to like 2, 3 a.m. almost, right? Then you're going to sleep for a couple yeah. hours and waking up again. Damn. See, this is why you're successful. This is why you're making it, bro. You're doing what I was doing. I was um I would I would I would get up at four in the morning, trade from four to eight thirty, work from eight thirty to five, and then after five to like twelve, I'd still be on the like I was like my family was like, You need to see a doctor. There's something wrong with you. 
Like they would call, they were calling me crazy. You know, my mom wanted me to see a psychiatrist, but like, it was like the, all I could see, like all I could think about, you know what I mean? So the, I feel like, I feel like to, to a certain degree, you have to be very dedicated to this craft um, and want it really bad enough. And I think if you, if you really put the time and effort there, you can definitely do it now. Um, what do you think about the community aspect? Like, do you think like being part of a community makes a difference in your, uh, like in your trading or like just uh, overall uh, in, for like your mental health of trading? Man, uh, no, for sure. Um, one thing uh, is definite that we both, we could both agree on is that, you know, trading is very lonely. It can get very lonely. Oh, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you're going to have to be putting in the work. What do you think about the, like being part of a, a community with like, like like-minded traders or any community at all? It doesn't have to be our community. Like, what do you think being part of a community makes the difference in your, in like in your trading and shit? Uh, so to sum it all up, man, um, you know, being in a community with like-minded traders who have, you know, similar mindsets, um, you know, it helped me definitely shorten my learning curve, I feel like, uh, in a very big way. You know, I feel like I wouldn't be where I am today getting these payouts um, through these funding companies, you know, if I didn't, you know, have this community to support me, you know, even when I'm mm -hmm. in drawdown, you know, the community supports yeah. you, you know what I mean? You're not alone. Um, yeah, it kind of yeah. reminds me that, you know, everyone's going through the challenges in their trading journey and, you know, definitely being in a community where we all support each other and, you know, root for, for each sure. other when we get these wins and also yeah, pick yeah. each other up when we get these losses. That's yeah. a really big thing, man, because, you know, for me, like my friends and family, they, you know, they wouldn't understand me if I were to tell them, no, you know, no. I'm, I'm deep in shit drawdown right now, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, or, you know, I'm, I'm in all these profits, you know, they, they still wouldn't understand what I'm doing, but you know, having a specific community, a group, you know, like a family in a sense, that yeah, you know, you could talk to, share ideas with, and grow together, man. It's 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 honestly priceless, bro. We'll talk. Yeah, and I think we have that going on with the trading LP Discord. I think it's been it's grown so much, like it's crazy. And I posted in there uh, maybe a month ago or something I put in the motivation section. I don't know if you read it. I posted, uh, you know, 2021 was a, an amazing year for me. I became profitable. I quit my job. I bought my uh, my dream car. I I helped my parents out financially. I did all these crazy things. But I still remember sitting there in this same room being lonely as like, you know, as as fuck, excuse my language. Like if I was in drawdown, it was painful. If I was, I, I remember making like $23,000 one day and I was just sitting here like, all right, what do I do now? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was, it was just really strange. Um, and then a lot, but being part of this community, you know, I had a, I had a day where I lost $18,000 and it was like, we were all joking about it, having fun. And we made it, I made it back the next week. So I feel like being part of a community is real important because trading can be really tough on your mental health, uh, especially when you're losing. It's just, it's a, it's a roller coaster of ups and downs. So you need to like right. balance that out somehow. You know what I mean? So, um, other than that, like, do you have any strict rules in place in terms of your funding accounts that, you know, you only risk a, a certain percentage per day, per trade, per week? Um, you know, like, what are you doing to make sure you keep these funded accounts around for a while? Because it's not easy to keep these funded accounts, especially when you're risking 1%. It can, you know, the drawdown can mess you up every now and then. Is there something that you're doing? Is there something that you'd advise other people to do? So uh, another big thing I took away from your uh, risk management course and, you know, funding challenge course that you have in your um, yeah. course section, which is very helpful, um, you know, risking that. For me personally, I risk 0.5% uh, when I get live on Excellent. an account. So, you know, if I were to take a loss, you know, I wouldn't beat myself up too much. I'd take the L, go to sleep, yeah. you know what I mean? Right, right. Um, but it definitely helps with the psychology because if you really think about it, you know what I mean? Uh, on a 100K account, 0.5% is 500 bucks, you know? That's, wow. you know, a good- 5%. Exactly. So that's, you know, okay. money that I never had first and foremost. Yeah. So when you introduce, um, you know, trading, stop halting trading between, uh, you know, the four to 8% range, you know, that was yeah. uh, really helpful for me because that was when, you know, I would take my payouts nowadays, especially, and I'm happy with that. You know what I mean? I'm cool with that. You know what I mean? Bro, that's um, a sweet I, spot. Exactly, man. So, Figured that uh, out. yeah. So as far as risking goes, um, on the challenges itself, you know, I do risk the 1%, um, but that's on that. Book. No choice. Exactly. As soon as I yeah. get live, man, and it's, you know, there's no time limit on anything, yeah. um, you know, max 0.5%, no matter what. Yeah. I don't know if you watched the fun. I, I don't know. Cause you did the course before, but I added a funding series later 
where I actually say in during like I'll tell like I say the risk management for phase one, phase two, and live yeah. it should be all yeah. different because yeah. people the, what people uh, think yeah. is yeah people assume that. I'm going to risk 1% during the challenge, then I'm going to do it in phase two, and then I'm going to make 10% every month unfunded, risking 1%. And then they blow accounts, and then they go into a crazy cycle of, because because they don't really know what they're doing. You know, there's a certain, you have to take these certain risk management steps to get funded, pass people, you know how many people screw up phase two? I think there was the, the stats were like, uh, like 94% of people who actually pass phase one fail phase two. It's like a really bad stat. Like a lot of people, it's very hard to pass even phase one, but phase two is even harder because people are so excited. They're risking 1% and they just, you have 60 days and people will message me out on the third day. I'll be like, already? Like, bro, you just started. So, you know, people don't understand that there's different risk parameters you're supposed to take at different stages of these. It's, it's a tough game and that's why you have to kind of understand it a little bit. Um... But yeah, man, I think you're doing you're doing excellent. Uh, we're gonna leave some link. I think you're, you you have a Telegram channel and you're starting a YouTube channel, so I'm gonna leave Chris's stuff in the links uh, below. If you guys want to get in touch with Chris, um, all that stuff. Um, uh, but one thing I wanted to add, another thing I wanted to ask you, Chris, was like, uh, like you're already profitable. You did it really fast. You did it faster than major. Like I would say, 99% of the people could possibly do it. But there's a lot of people, you know, in in in. And there's there's a lot of successful people in our community. There's a lot of people that are break even in our community, but even on YouTube and I get DMs and you probably do too. A lot of people like struggling. They're half profitable. They're half not. What is like the biggest advice you can give? Like you know whether it's you know stick with one strategy or like like what is something that some if somebody's not if somebody's like break even, what is something they can do to get into your shoes as soon as possible? So the biggest thing I. Uh... Uh, I definitely want to touch on on that, especially I did want to. Um, so when I first started Forex, I feel like something that boosted me um, to get to where I am at a pretty fast rate. Um, December 1st, I remember it clearly. Um, I literally deactivated all personal social media. I dipped off, you know, the face of the earth, technically, you know what I mean? I stopped showing up to parties. I stopped showing up to even sometimes even family parties. You know, I'm not going to lie. I mm-hmm. stopped showing up because, you know, uh, I was in that mode and phase that I'm still, I am now of, you know, progression, practice makes progression. Right. Uh, So the biggest thing I would tell someone who's in that um, drawdown phase or even break even phase would be, you know, stop having that comparison of yourself with other traders. I feel like is a really big one uh, because you're not going to get any benefit from it. And, you know, for me, especially um, is to, stay consistent because I know how it is to sprint really fast, drop the ball. And then, yeah, you know, yeah. you could, you know, you're not, your tools aren't sharpened anymore. You know what I mean? You have to create yeah, yeah, yeah. your life around it. You know what I mean? You want to incorporate, find that balance. You know, for me, I go to work, I go to the gym, right. it clears my mind a lot. That's kind of like my therapy. Um, you know, I listen to really good. I listen to classical music, man. I never, I would have never thought it I listened to that, but it, it helps me, man. Yeah. yeah while I'm it works. Um, but yeah, man. Um, try to find that consistency with yourself. Uh, for me, it's different from Usman. You know what I mean? It's, it's right, very right, different right. because, you know, he has his routine. I have mine. Having that solid routine before and after you trade and in your life uh, will definitely display in your yeah. P&L, I feel like, because who you are outside of the charts is who you are yeah. you know, while you're trading. And I'm On a big the believer in that. Yo, man, you hit the nail right there. That, that's an, uh, I'm going to use this clip on Instagram. Uh, you said it perfectly because... That's one thing I did too. I compl- I don't have and I don't have personal social medias anymore at all. All I have is the trading LP, Instagram, and Twitter, and I only use it to post stuff and I don't consume stuff. I don't care if somebody's hitting. People will message me and be like, "Oh, look at this person. He's he does ten R twenty R." I'm like, well, "I don't care, bro. I don't care. Why would I care about that?" Right. You right. know. And then I had to, one of the students in the trading LP community. You know. He was struggling with his psychology and he said, well, it's been three years and I'm not making money, but look at all these other people making money. He said, so what? It is you versus you. You know, you need to do what the next best thing is for you. So for, you know, Chris, you go to work, you work out, you do your trading. You don't care what I'm doing. You don't care what anybody else is doing. You do pop up in the community, say, hey, what up? You know, you talk, but you don't give a, you know, fuck about what this person just made or that person just made. Like you're focused on your payouts. Um, and once you start getting distracted and you see other people, like people see me smashing challenges and they're like, 
somebody messaged me the other day. They're like, I don't know. They saw me smash a challenge and then they just decided to like blow 10 challenge. I don't know what they did. I don't know what it was. So anyways, it's like you cannot pay attention to what because you don't know my journey. You don't know what I went through. You don't know what I did to get to this point. So it's like, you know, it's you versus you. And I think the reason you're pretty successful is like you have worked hard and you've worked the correct way towards your trading. You know what I mean? You kept your head down. You're working. You're still working your job. You're still doing your thing. So, man, congratulations on everything that you've achieved, Chris. Um, it's, it's a big deal, man. I'm, I'm honored to have you in my community. It's real awesome. Um, guys, I'm going to leave all of Chris's links in, in the description below. Thanks for coming on the podcast, dude. Maybe we'll have you on in a year once you're making millions, you know. I'm sure you will be. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you back on. We'll do a live meetup. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do a live meetup somewhere. Let's do it, man. Dubai or something. But uh, thank you for coming on the podcast, Chris, and uh, we'll see you soon.